Well, you can tell by the way I walk my walk. I'm a ladies' man, no time to talk. We are going to do the definition of confidence, and this is one of the top three, some students say the very hardest, part of the class. And from here on out, you're going to see lots of questions testing whether you've got this. So here's the game we're going to play. We're going to divide the board in half. On one side, I'm going to write sentences that you can say, and on the other side is going to be sentences you cannot say about confidence intervals. So here's our scenario. We're talking about a 95% confidence interval for the average weight of a panda is about 195 to 215 pounds, and that's about right. I just looked it up. Why do we care so much about pandas? Because they're cute. If pandas were ugly, they would probably be extinct by now. So on this side of the board, I'm going to write good ways to talk about confidence intervals, and over here, bad ways to talk about confidence intervals. For example, the most classic ways is to say, we are 95% confident that the true average weight of a panda is between 195 and 215. That's the most common way to talk about confidence intervals and a great way to talk about it. Here is the most common wrong way to talk about confidence intervals. There is a 95% probability that the true average weight of a panda is between 195 and 215 pounds. The problem with this is it's saying there's probability after the study is completed. Nothing's random anymore. We're not randomly choosing pandas anymore. So either the average weight really is in this range or it's not. You can't use probability after everything is done. If you wanted to use probability to talk about a confidence interval that is done, the only way you could do it would be you'd have to say the probability is 0 or 1. In other words, it did or it didn't. There's no more use in talking about probability after the fact. Another very common mistake that people say is, that 95% of the pandas will have a weight between 195 and 215. That's wrong because our confidence interval is trying to capture the average, not the pandas. There are some pandas that weigh 250 pounds. There's actually some pandas that weigh 350 pounds. They're rare. But I'm not saying the pandas have to land in this. In fact, if we surveyed more people, that confidence interval would start to narrow in, to zero in on where that true average is. It doesn't mean pandas are becoming more consistent. It's your knowledge of the average that is narrowing in. So this confidence interval does not capture pandas. It captures averages, because that's what we did the confidence interval for. Here's another important good way to talk about it. Using a method that correctly captures the mean 95% of the time, we estimate the average to be between 195 and 215. That's what this 95% means. The 95% means this method works 95% of the time. It doesn't mean it works this time. There's no way to know for sure that it worked this time because the method doesn't always work. But the method does work 95% of the time, and this time, here are the answers that we got. Now, please don't fall for this trick. There is a 95% chance that the average weight of a panda is between 195 and 215. The trick here is chance is the same meaning as probability, likelihood, okay? Just because it doesn't say probability doesn't mean that's not what it's talking about. This is the same problem we had before where we were trying to use probability when there's nothing that's random anymore. This sentence does use the word probability. Do you notice? There's a 95% probability that a new confidence interval will correctly capture the true average. That's still random because we haven't picked which random pandas would be in that new study. But if we did a new confidence interval, it will correctly capture the true average with 95% probability. That's okay. That's what the 95% probability means. This method has that probability. This, this realization does not because there's no randomness left to it. Now this wording might look similar to this one where we're saying there is a 95% probability that a new study will get a confidence interval of 195 to 215. Let me reword this so it's obvious how wrong it is. There's a 95% chance that if you redid this study, you'd get the exact same numbers. Yeah, no, not going to happen, okay? There's a 95% chance of capturing the mean, not a 95% chance of getting the same numbers. Let's reword this. 95% of all confidence intervals that are done this way will capture the true average. That's another way of saying this is a method that works 95% of the time. Don't fall for this sentence. 
Students often think this is saying the same thing, and it's not. 95% of the time, the average will be between 195 and 215. The average is fixed, it's not random. So when is the 5% of the time that it's not in this interval? Is it like on the weekends? Mu is between these two numbers, except on the weekend, mu hops out. No, of course, that doesn't make any sense. Over here, we were talking 95% of the time that you use this method. That's random because every time you do this, you're picking a new random sample. Here, nothing is random. You can't say 95% of the time. You could say that if we did 100 intervals, about 95 of them would capture the true average. That's saying the same thing we said before. This method works 95% of the time. The about is important. If I had said exactly 95 of them, that would be wrong because there's randomness. It could be you do 100 confidence intervals and all of them would capture mu, or none of them if you were super, super unlucky. But we expect 95 of them, so it should be about 95 of them that would capture the true average. What if we said there's a 95% probability that a new sample will have an average between 195 and 215? This might feel right to you because we're saying probability for a new sample. But this interval was made to capture mu, not made to capture x-bars. And what we're saying here is random x-bars will land in this interval. That's not how this interval works. That's not how it made. The reason is this confidence interval was made by an x-bar, and that x-bar might have been far away from mu. And so the confidence interval for him, although it captures mu, it doesn't capture where the probability is for averages. If you want to do a sentence like this, you need to try, there's a 95% probability of a new sample average being within a margin of error. That's how margin of error was defined. From mu, margin of error, margin of error, this captures 95% of sample averages. Centered at mu, not centered at some random x-bar. These are probably the hardest sentences that we get to when we deal with this topic. But there is one more I want to show you. This looks a lot like that first sentence we did. We are 95% confident the true average weight of a mammal is between 195 and 215. Did you catch the mammal? We're talking about pandas. You can't change your population. If you survey residents in Wyoming, don't talk about all Americans. It's little words like this that I can use to check are you really thinking about each word in this sentence. And that is a hard part of this class. Let's end with a good sentence, which is almost exactly like the one we started with. The true average weight of a panda is between 195 and 215 with 95% confidence. I hope you've picked up the only way that you can get these numbers from our actual interval combined with 95% is with the bridge confidence. That's what makes the word confidence so important. So this is arguably the hardest part of this class. And it's important to me because it's not just can you use confidence intervals, but do you have a fundamental concept of what confidence means? For that reason, you're going to see a huge long video right now, and you're going to have one of these in every homework, and I will give you a clue, one of these will be in every exam, I can promise you. So this is important. If you're having a hard time with it, you're not alone, but make sure you practice this until you get it.